everyone, welcome back to Umineko episode 2 part 4. The last time we left off, Beatrice finally entered the mansion and she is looking for Kinzo. So, without further ado, let's just get right into it. So she has a guest room prepared for her. After receiving approval, Kenan entered the VIP room, pushing the lunch serving cart. The servants called this room the witch's VIP room. That was because they had been strictly ordered by Kinzo to always keep it cleaned so that it could be used at any time. And yet, guests were never allowed into this room no matter who they were. That's why, at some point, the servants had started calling it the witch's VIP room. Supposed to be set aside only to welcome the special person Kinzo was waiting for, the witch from the portrait. And today, Canon learned that this was entirely correct. When he entered the room, the witch with golden hair was gazing out the window. Outside, the rain has already started to gather strength. As she looked out at the beautiful rose garden, which had taken several days' work to make ready for today, and saw the winds and rain ravage it. Was she lost in some sentimental feelings? Kenan was not able to infer anything more from her back that faced him. So Kenan went out of his way to call out the witch's name because he wanted to make her turn around. He wanted to know. He wanted to know whether the witch who had tempted him and Shannon in the past really had appeared again. When he did, the witch whose name had been called kept her back to him and laughed. Maybe she can read his mind. Laughed in a subdued voice. Cannon was startled. It was almost as though she had read his mind and knew that he had called to her out of a desire to make her turn around. Hmm. <laughs> Actually, I'm curious if Beatrice can eat human food is what I wanted to say and then I remembered that Shannon has actually given her, like, a little treat before. はい。近年入った豪だという料理人です。料理の腕が良きことは何にも勝るものよ。美食は人の世で生きる快楽の山中をなす。千年を飽きぬには、これを欠かさぬが秘訣よ。<笑> <laughs> Kenan and the witch's eyes met, and she grinned. There could be no doubt, not even the slightest. This was without a doubt the witch from that day, Beatrice. The witch that was once visible only to him and Shannon now finally held a form and had arrived openly through the entrance hall as a guest. This was what I was wondering about since before she was unable to sustain her form as a human but well she's not human but you know what I mean um, but now she can openly hold this form which means something right that some conditions have been fulfilled and that's why she's here What's happening? Summer. Oh, 
お久しぶりでございます。Why is he having such a hard time speaking? Tenon tried not to forget a modicum of courtesy towards the guest. But dark clouds had begun to enshroud his heart because of the visit to this suspicious witch and on the day of the family conference at that. I am. <laughs> Canon didn't force himself to answer. This witch probably reads minds. That would make a lot of sense, actually, given how she stared Rosa down in the garden. So it would be pointless to go to all the trouble of saying it out loud. Of course, even that rebellious spirit of his would be read. So the witch snickered at Canon's childish resistance. <laughs> Final promise. Oh-my-god! So... What if everyone that was sacrificed is because Kinzo sacrificed them? Well, that's what we're trying to find out, right? However, anxiety began to gather in his heart. This witch never had anything good to say. <laughs> Well, essentially she just confirmed that she can read minds. ろくな目には合わんがな。しかし、金蔵も食えぬ。我らの利子の取り立てすらも自らの儀式に取り込みおった。我らを Ken couldn't guess what the witch was muttering and laughing about. All he knew was that anything this witch deemed worthy of laughter must have the exact opposite meaning to the rest of them. And rising to the back of his mind were the horrifying words the witch had spat at him in the past. Did you think I would lend them that power without any compensation? I'll lend a hand in love. And my compensation shall be the one ticket to watch the cruel fate that the two of them will eventually meet. Even after 1,000 years, no better show exists. <gasps> Cannon's face always looks like a cat like this. <laughs> Something is gonna happen, for sure. Nats <laughs> The witch suddenly began to recite a bizarre poem. It was something he remembered hearing.
There was no doubt. It was the epitaph accompanying the portrait of the witch that had been hung by Kinzo. The relatives imagined that it was almost certainly pointed to the location of the hidden gold. But no one knew what it meant. The witch had suddenly begun reciting that epitaph. Kano, Kagu de Aru Kisama Nara, Kinzo Kara Kite Yo, Subeteo, Ogon Kyo E Kaisu Hinga Yatte Kitano Da. Yorokobu ga i. Omae no chijoku ni mamireta kagu no hibi ga. Yoyaku oaru toki ga yatte kitano da. Omae wa sore o zutto nozonde kita hazu. Mizukara ni sonzai kachi o motanu kagu ni totte. Tada sonzai suru dake no hibi wa kutsu ni hoka nara nai. Tamashi aru mono ni totte. Utsushio wa koshitsu su beki mono da ga. Naki mono ni totte utsushio wa kugai desu ka nai kara no. Complicated expressions flitted across Kenan's face. It was a day of release that he had been looking forward to. However, the coming of this day had been mercilessly sudden. And the hateful tone of the witch, who had proclaimed this day of rest, made it somehow difficult to accept. Kenan wasn't even able to decide what emotion he should feel. うつしおに何かの未練があるというのか家具の分際で未練などない僕は家具だから貴様は実にも反的な家具だなよいよいしかし何の未練もないとはつくづく面白みのない<笑> <笑>未練こそがお前の快楽だというのかその通り千年も生きると大抵の魔女は生き飽きるわらわは退屈から逃れるために人間たちの運命にブランデーや果実を練り込み景気のように焼き上げるのだ オーブンの中で苛烈な運命に踊る人間たちのなんと面白きことわらわはこの方面にかけては地と知られていてなわらわの料理の腕を見に時には遠方から珍客が見物に来ることすらあるくらいよ言ってもカグごときには理解できぬ
So how could he remember Jessica at a time like this? He felt a little ashamed by how weak he was. And to forget about Jessica, he turned his thoughts to Shannon. Shannon is also furniture. On a day, everything returns to nothing. There was no reason she shouldn't be happy. But Shannon, through her relationship with George, had come to know an emotion that shouldn't be known by furniture. Even though she wasn't qualified to be bound with him, she was still wallowing in a dream that she wasn't permitted to have. Could Shannon accept something like this now with open arms? Impossible. Shannon would have lingering regrets. That would probably become a great source of pain and torture for Shannon. And those regrets had been planted by none other than this witch. Why? Just because that would be more interesting. シャノは街を歩いていたはずの日に知ってはならない感情を持ちとても辛い思いを強いられるだろう僕は僕たち家具を解放する日を手土産に訪れてくれたあなたに感謝する Does he really? I don't think so. そして Tell her off, Cannon. お前もシャノン同様に未練に苦しませてやりたかったぞ。シャノンの未練がそなたの未練となるおのそれは笑わいの憎悪の金蔵の家具ならばその程度の力は持っているしかし笑わを殺せば because Beatrice is the one to usher them into the Golden Land? That's why if Cannon killed her, they would not have their rest? Still, the whole thing about furniture is complicated and confusing. Since, by the way, um, Beatrice and Cannon talks about their release, it seems like it's supposed to be a good thing for furniture anyway. Hizamazuke! Nanyo! ひざまずき。わらわの靴に口づけをするがよい。さもなくばわらわはこの場を立ち去ろうぞ。帰りて永遠に姿をわらわさん。Oh my goodness. No, カノン。そなたはそれに耐えられるのか? <笑> 黄金鏡の扉が開かれればそなたの苦難に満ちた家具の生は終わろう望むならば人間としての生を与えてもよいさすればもはやジェシカとは対等貴様も知りたいはずだ恋の味が。She's tempting him. 隠そうとも知っておるぞ。甘き恋の沼にて溺れるシャノンを見て、そなたは羨ましがっている。恋の味を知りたくてうずうずしておるのよ。やめろ。やめろ。僕を再び牢獄するつもりか。<笑><笑><笑> 
僕はお前を楽しませるためのおもちゃになり果てたりしないほうならばシャノンで満足するとしよう。まいた種はそなただけではないのでな。時には実を結ばぬ果実もある。鍵を手にせし者はいかに従えて黄金郷へ旅立つべし。第一の番に鍵の選びし六人を生贄に捧げよ。第二の番に残されし者は寄り添う二人を引き裂け。The witch recited the epitaph again. It was so sudden and diverged so strongly from the current topic. However, her challenging smile made it seem almost as though she was using that epitaph as a threat to Canon. わからぬかこの碑文の儀式を成し遂げるには、第二の晩に、寄り添う二人を生贄に捧げねばならぬ。寄り添う二人は誰でもよい。夫婦でもよいし、恋人同士でもよい。誰を選ぶかは、儀式のルールにのっとり、わらわが気まぐれに決めてよいことになっている。今のシャノンなら、これほどふさわしい第二の番の生贄もないとは思わぬか<笑>ひ卑劣だ。キャノン learned then。Yet thought that he should give。that he had given everything up。and lived until today as a furniture。like furniture should。But in reality, that wasn't true. He had loved Shannon too dearly. And so, when Shannon was in pain, Cannon shared in that. If only Shannon had continued to exist as furniture, living indifferently like Cannon, without any attachments to this world, they wouldn't have had to be in so much pain. The witch planned to toy with Shannon. But learned the taste of love. No, who she had taught the taste of love as she killed her. She would not invite her to the Golden Land as a merciful release, but would make her a sacrifice for that evil ritual after dealing her the limits of torture and pain. And this witch would probably actually make Shannon meet this horrible fate. For no other reason than it would be interesting for her. Furthermore, she was threatening to do that so that she could make Canon, who hadn't submitted to the witch even once until now, finally surrender. It was that simple. In the end, though he had tried resisting the witch to avoid pleasing her, he had only made things interesting for her. After all, he was furniture. No, a toy. There were nothing but toys meant only to distract her from her boredom. No, sir, Canon. Hiza mazukeba. Shannon will be in any other book or shikai in Koto Monaizu. お前のような玩具を一度屈服させてみたかった<笑> Without even a fragment of elegance, the witch sneered at Cannon with a vulgar laugh. Yes, even before Cannon had made up his mind, she had seen through to his surrender. <coughs> She's a fortune teller now as well. Kenan got down on one knee and chose to genuflect before the witch. Now I gotta search out what that actually means. He didn't care what had happened to himself. However, just the fact that Shannon, who during his days as furniture had given him only reason to live, Was being toyed with, 
and that alone was something that he couldn't overlook. Therefore, something like kissing the shoes of the witch was an easy oath for Kenan to make. At the time that his quivering lips actually touched the witch's shoe, Beatrice, after allowing a look of ecstasy to rise to her face, let out an ear-splitting laugh. In that moment, the witch who had tired of a thousand years of life was completely filled with the evil emotion that was her only Ryzen deter <laughs> God. <laughs> Lunch had ended, and the relatives had moved to the parlor. Rosa had bought a high-class brand of black tea from a famous store in Ginza. That had been served, and the inside of the parlor was filled with a very nice aroma. Since the children were together with the adults, the adults were, at least on the surface, interacting with relatives, talking peacefully about recent events and how their children were growing up. It had started raining outside, so the children were unable to go out, and had no choice but to sit here like this, watching TV. Like a true TV kid, Maria was watching vapid daytime programs one after another without getting bored and was giggling all to herself. It seemed that Butler had joined in at first, deepening his relationship with Maria. But he had gotten up early that morning, and so was gradually attacked by waves of drowsiness. Oh,やおおきなあくびだね。朝がずいぶんはやかったんじゃないのかい。まそんなとこだよ。<laughs> <laughs> Butler <laughs> gave a great yawn once again and slowly lay down on the sofa. He really did look tired. George and the others had started talking to him, taking his yawns as a sign of boredom, but when they realized he really was sleepy, they decided to let him be. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Shokuji no ato ni sugu yoko ni naru to saba ni naru to moshimasu yo. ちょうどよせ。ゴーダさん、今夜は孔子のステーキだって言ってたぜ。サバのステーキになっちまう。熊沢さん、こいつ本当に眠いらしい。毛布を持ってきてあげてくれないかな。さあ、どうぞ。
she probably just saw Battler wrapped up in a blanket and wanted to do the same. When she received the blanket from Kumasawa, she joyfully wrapped herself up in it and set up camp again in front of the TV. Even though all cousins are finally together, one has become a TV kid, the other is sleeping like a log, and the third one is off in some la la land dreaming about Shannon and Jessica is complaining. <laughs> こいつ、今回の親族会議の主賓だって自覚全然ねえな。聞こえてるぞ。のんびり昼飯を食って、しかも外は台風で雨。何もすることがねえってことは、つまり、俺の出番じゃねえってことさ。So if even lunch and now now they're here. Okay. それはどうかな。何も起こらないから何もしないなんて受け身の姿勢じゃ人生は退屈だよ。George knows what he's talking about. 違うぜ。そういう意味じゃない。うん、なんつうのかな。こういう時、俺はこう思うことにしてる。出番じゃねえんだよ。I can't help but feel like he's talking about the game. こいつがお芝居だったならさ、俺の出番じゃねえってことなんだよ。だったら、舞台袖でおとなしくしてるに限るってわけさ。But in any case, if now isn't his turn, then whose turn is it? 自分の人生はいつだって自分が主人公だろ。そんな脇役根性でどうすんだよ。自分から進んで舞台に上がらなきゃ。そういう意味じゃねえ。今は俺の出番じゃねえって言いたいのさ。Being so cryptic right now. うん。悪いな。眠くて思考がめちゃくちゃだ。勘弁してくれ。確かに。眠くて、なんだか尻滅裂なことを言ってるね。もうそっとしてあげようよ。私は聞き捨てならねえぜ。自分の人生はいつだって自分が主人公だよ。ちょっとそのあたり、本格的にバトラーと議論したいけどな。
そなたがわらわを否定する最大の根拠は単にわらわが駒としてゲーム盤に並ばなかったからというだけのことならばこうしてクイーンを先にさせばいいだけの話ではないか初手にてクイーンに道を開けるはチェスの王道ではないかふ,ふざけやがってこんなの認められるわけねえじゃねえかよ魔女が歩いて玄関からやってきただとふざけるじゃねえ<笑>なんだなんだ前回のゲームではそなたに散々自由に手を進めさせたぞこたびはわらわがそなたの手に合わせて駒を動かしたにすぎん焦点にてもう降参かくくそったれふざけるな誰が降参なんかするかってんだ上等なさしてらぜ好きに進めればいいじゃねえかなるほどなまだまだお前の手番は終わってないってわけだ好きに手を進めりゃいい今のうちに十分な人権を築いとく俺が必ずしのぐ必ず詰める言い訳なんてされたくねえ存分に来やがれってんだ<笑>まだまだこの程度じゃ魔女なんて認められるわけがねえぜそうささっきマリアのお菓子を魔法で直したように見えたが実は同じお菓子をもう一つ懐に忍ばせていて芝居がかった方法ですり替えてああそうそうそうに決まってるダメだぜ全然ダメだぜ So everything about this is to make Butler accept Beatrice's existence so that they can all go into the golden land It seems. That's what I'm gathering from this interaction. It seems like Beatrice is trying to、um, make Battler basically bow down to her and accept her existence. So she's trying to create a scenario in which he absolutely cannot explain it in a way where we just don't exist. But I feel like for Battler's sake, Isn't it better to just accept that Beatrice is a witch and exists so that you don't have to doubt your fellow relatives? Kind of feels that way to me. Ho ho. Rosa wa. Kashi ga chow ni chiru shun kan o mita zu. Shi. 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 大した問題じゃねえ<笑>説明のつかぬ部分はさまつと切り捨てたかなるほどそれがそなたの受け手であるな<笑>墓穴を掘ったぞ後ろ宮バトラー<笑>お前の手番はまだ先だぞもうしばらくわらわの手番を進めさせてもらうまだまだこれからだぞ魔女の手番は Alright That's the name of this chapter Turn of the Witch When they started hearing Battler's snores, the relatives went their separate ways, leaving the parlor and letting Battler sleep in silence. So basically, everything that's happening in this version of events is separate from the original version. Even though it had been so lively in the parlor, with so many people gathered there, when all of them scattered at once and were sucked into the vast mansion, He created an eerie silence with no sound except that of the rain. Yeah, so many people have been in the world. 
guess we'll be seeing a lot of Rudolph this episode. あ、ったことなんてないわ。キリエさん、本当なの私もちょっと玄関ホールに出た時に挨拶をしただけです。20歳ちょっとくらいに見えたわ。私は名乗ったんだけど、彼女は名乗らなかった。現地さんに案内され
俺たちの話を整理した上で敵の撃ってくる手が見えるか<笑> I'm sorry, but this is a bit funny the way he's saying it. It's like Kirie has some kind of magic power that can see into the future or read her enemies. Move. Rudolph had a certain measure of trust in Kirie's unique thinking technique, chessboard thinking. Of course, it didn't give him any more peace of mind than fortune telling. But every time Rudolph was concocting some important strategy, he would give a great deal of thought to Kirie's advice. For a while, Kirie pressed her finger against her forehead, considering. でも今日までタイオウを撃たれると不利になるものらしい。わかる Supposedly, Beatrice is on shaky ground. So, ne? Mushiro Utanga Tachibani are what I touching me. Bengosh demo cantes demo trete cosasete. Guno de Modena I could I need digits or skits get a becky nano yo. So, Renga de Kiru Narane? Hm. Smarty, Shu Nerai to you, Jitende. Take you a Masho Menkar no Seko who they were cutting to you put all Yimisu Akena? Doria. 絶対勝てる切り札はどうどうと切るに限るで。周り駆動い切り方はむしろ切り札を困らせるもんや。結論から言うと、皆さんがご就寝の遺産問題に直接。もしくは間接的に絡む相当のサプライズが突きつけられると
、血縁証明でも示してみせるかもしれんで、お父さんの血が流れてることが、例えば母子手帳でも示されたらどうにもならん。証明物なんかいくらでも偽装を疑える。仮にそれが本物だったとしても、当人が本人だと証明するには、病院沙汰にしなきゃならん。少なくとも、今の六軒島でそれを証明することは不可能だ。その通りねつまりこういうことよ今の六軒島では何が示されても真実だと受け入れることはできない台風が去ってしかるべき場所で証明してみせるまで何も信じられないってことよ<笑>そういうので揚げ足を取りまくるのは姉貴の得意技だな任せるぜバカ言ってんじゃないわよあんたも協力するのよ。私たちにはお金がいる。それも急ぎ、まとまった額が。私たちは運命共同体よ。こんなところで、ひょっこり現れた謎の女に遺産の当てをぶち壊されてたまるもんですか It was only at a time like this that Rudolph and Eva united as siblings. Sickened by the idea that their own inheritance might be snatched away by an outsider. Kiria noticed how indomitable they looked, shook her head slightly, and gave a small sigh as she looked out the window. Outside, there was still a strong rain falling, and everything was gray, having lost all vibrance. It felt like the lush garden that the sun had shone on earlier had never existed. For some reason, the words Eva had said just a short while ago kept repeating in Kiria's head. It boils down to this. No matter what is shown to us now on Okinjima, it can't be accepted as truth. There was an odd nuance to those words. Right now, this island was closed off by the typhoon and isolated. There were no official institutions here and no hospital. So, no matter what institution had issued, What kind of documentation? On this island, one could claim that it was all fiction. It was impossible to prove that something was the truth. They were cut off from the outside world, and all truths proven in the outside world would be called fiction. So, did that mean that now, on this Rokinjima, there was nothing that was truthful? That everything would be controlled by fiction. It almost gave the illusion that separate from the human world made from truth was another world called fiction in which they had been shut away. Kirie remembered what that woman had looked like one more time. And she remembered the woman's figure in the witch of the portrait. On this island, which had been isolated from the world of humans and shut away in the world of non humans, a non human being had visited. No matter what she did, Kiria couldn't help think of the smile that had appeared on the woman's face as anything. Other than ominous. In trying to understand that ominous smile, it feels like my chessboard thinking mistook a vital premise. That's right. That smile seemed like that of something non human looking down on me. I had reasoned based on the assumption that our opponent was a human like us. However, Just like this island now, she may be a being that is not human, and human values may not apply to her. In that case, all reasoning is useless. For what reason was the witch invited here today? Only one thing is certain. Right this very moment, she is staying somewhere in this vast mansion.
リア、今日のお昼に、お外で、私たち、会ったわよね。女の人に。あれは、誰おお、何度も言ってる。ベアトリーチェ。マリアは、以前にベアトリーチェと会ったことがあるのおお、毎年会ってる。毎年この、六軒島のお屋敷でおお、ううじゃわからないでしょ。そうなのう、うん。いつから会ってるの何年前からおおわかんない。わからないどうして去年おととしもっと前から。おお。Rosa was aghast. Only the Ushiromiya mansion existed on this island. So there was no way there were... There were any humans other than themselves on this island. And yet, Maria said that she had been meeting with that suspicious woman every year during the family conference. If what Maria said was the truth, then that strange woman called Beatrice had been at the family conference every year. That's insane. Is she saying that some eerie woman was at the family conference every year? And none of us ever noticed it? Even though Rosa had just met her herself a couple of hours ago in the Rose Garden, she was overcome with a strange emotion which told her not to accept her existence. Oh! Battler? What in the world did I meet with earlier today in the Rose Garden? As the typhoon grew close and the winds blew strong. <sighs> Maria. Now I'm wondering. Um. Since Battler and Beatrice are playing a game, that perhaps they are exerting their influence on this alternate reality? That's really interesting. Anata wa. 毎年彼女と会ってると言ったわね。会って、何をしてるのおう。お歌を歌ったり、魔法を習ったり、魔法人の書き方も習うの。そ、そう。それはすごいわね。マリアがよく自由帳に落書き、じゃない、魔法人を書いたりしてるわよね。それも、彼女に教えてもらったの。にね、お手本書いてもらうのほらほら見て見て Maria joyfully fished around in her handbag then she took out a notebook and started opening its pages most of the pages were covered with drawings that were literally scribbles all of them were occult like things and while it might sound rude to Maria who was joyfully flipping through the pages they were all creepy <laughs> I'm a bit scared to see what's gonna show up. Oh. And all of those symbols were the same ones that appeared on all the crime scenes. On each page Maria opened to, there was. Another eerie magic circle that had been drawn. Furthermore, at a glance, Rosa realized that Maria hadn't drawn them. The strength of the strokes, the thickness of the lines, and how clean the shape was. This by itself wasn't enough to guess the background of the person who had drawn it, but it was enough for Rosa to understand that it was definitely someone older than Maria. Rosa had to accept it now. There really was a person on this Rokenjima who she hadn't even known existed. And this person had been playing with Maria during the family conference every year. Maria, so. 
魔女のベアトリーチェはここに住んでいるのそれとも私たちのように島の外に住んでいるのおおベアトリーチェはロッケン島の魔女だからこの島に住んでるじゃあ親族会議のない日にもこの島にいるおおフーじゃわからないでしょどうなのおうんおおおおおまいがしおまいがし I can't believe it I can't believe it How long has this unknown witch been living on this island? I used to live on this island. I lived on this island, passing a time in a mansion, in the Rose Garden. And even so, I never encountered a witch like that. Never, I think. I was probably getting a little mixed up with my memories from when I was a young girl. When I was a young girl, unlike Maria, I was very frightened of witches. So for me, the name Beatrice was a synonym for something frightening. So it must be that feeling of fear from my days as a young girl has been revived because a woman calling herself that has appeared. She couldn't be a witch. She's obviously a human, calling herself Beatrice. Right? Oh, yes. That witch entrusted me with an envelope. What in the world could that be? Rosa pulled that western envelope out of her pocket. It was the Western envelope which bore the Ushiromiya crest which Kinzo used on his personal letters. And it had even been sealed with a red sealing wax by the head's ring which Kinzo held. Which meant this envelope belonged to the Ushiromiya head. In other words, it was from father. Why was a woman calling herself Beatrice holding it? And why did she give it to me? That's right. I'm sure she said to read this aloud at dinner. What in the world could be written inside? Anxiety gripped Rosa, as if opening this envelope might release some kind of moment, monumental disaster. However, at the same time, a little curiosity sprouted up, causing her to want to find out what was written inside before the other siblings. Using common sense, one could guess that a huge decision somehow related to father's inheritance was probably written inside. Actually, since he had given it to a woman calling herself Beatrice, there was no way that wasn't related. Did this mean that he wanted the inheritance split not between four, but between five, including her? I need a large sum of money. And I can't wait long. I do feel like a sinful daughter for discussing the distribution of father's inheritance while he's still alive. However, I'm no longer at a stage where I can afford to keep everything pretty. And I'm even consulting with Rudolf Nisan and Eva Nisan in order to get some money out of Kraus Nisan. Myself in this situation, I can't help but sense something ominous in the appearance of the witch. What could be written in here? I'm sure there must be something frightening written. Shall I first read it secretly to myself? The witch had requested it be done at the dinner table when everyone was gathered. However, in that case, Couldn't she just read aloud at the dinner table herself? Why did she go to all the trouble of entrusting it to me? 
Did that mean, basically, that it didn't matter whether I secretly read it beforehand? It would be better to secretly read the contents first. I understand that it would be breaking my promise. But this is no longer the time to keep things pretty. It would probably be good to discuss it with Evanesan and Rulofni-san, depending on the contents. Nesan and the rest are always really good thinkers when it comes to this kind of thing. As I gulped and put my hand to the red sealing wax. Oh, 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 something suddenly pulled on my sleeve and I let out a small shriek. Maria. <gasps> Nani? <sighs> Maria, Nana. Hodorokase nai de. Nani? Dame. <laughs> Maria was making the same ominous expression Rosa had seen on the witch, sending a tingle up her spine. Beatrice wa mama ni sono tegami wa bansan de yomi nasai itte itta. Majo no yakusoku wa yabutcha dame da yo. Chigau wa yo. ちょっと封筒みただけじゃない。約束はものもよ。ママも。いつもマリアに約束は守りなさいって言ってるもんね。ママも。もちろん約束は守るわよ。うん。ママはいいか。It's such a strange way to speak to your parent. その笑い方、可愛くないからやめなさい。そういえばマリアも封筒をもらったわよね。中には何て書いてあったの。開けてない。ベアトリーチェは開ける時が来るまで開けちゃダメって言った。だから大事に持ってる。うん。そう。そう。マリアはベアトリーチェの言うことはち
She couldn't allow an unknown being to make direct contact with her daughter anymore. This is just so creepy and strange. It's six. Furniture and people. Maria, I just wanted to say that after the horrors of what was episode one, I must admit that I have kind of gotten used to the kind of peaceful life that we are having now. But then, um, well, Beatrice showed up and Maria started her witch laugh again, which is making me kind of scared for any potential jump scares from now on so yes i was in heaven for a little while and now i've been thrown down to hell ever since they had met maria in the airport she had constantly been making a huge fuss about halloween but it seemed she had cut loose a little too much and acted a little too boisterous on a plane, on a boat, and during lunch, because Rosa had warned her several times. In times like that, Auntie Rosa would rarely scold her in front of people. More commonly, she would call Maria into the shadows and scold her when they were alone, so they know. So since Maria had been called off somewhere, they thought she must be getting scolded. When they looked at the clock, they realized that it was almost six. They couldn't really imagine that Maria had been scolded this whole time. Perhaps it had come time for some anime she watched every week to start or something. She had probably just decided to stay in the mansion's parlor. So things really are... Progressing in a very different way. Maria chan ni tote, Batora kun wa atarashi tomodachi no yona kanji datta ro kara ne. Sono Batora kun to hikou jo de Halloween gokko o suru no ga kito totemo tanoshi katta nda yo. Batora mo zuibun hashai deta na. Aitsu, zutai wa dekaku natta ってのに nakami wa mukashi kara zenzen kawara ne ze. So desu ne. Batora sama wa 6年前のままでいてくださった気がします。That's a weird way to phrase it. シャノンは6年前のバトラ君のこと覚えてるんだ。ええ、何しろ、大層お元気な方でしたから。<笑>僕も6年前に4人で遊んだことを思い出すよ。シャノンはだいぶお姉さん風だったね。そうだな。今よりしっかりしてた気がするぜ。<laughs> so, so it was a little bit of 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 a オフの時の作用は使い分けていいだろう。奴隷じゃないんだぜ。使用人の仕事をしてるだけじゃないかよ。私はシャノンとは、うん。サヨとは、一番古い友人だと思ってるぜ。ああ。<笑>ありがとうございます。お嬢様。It seemed that Shannon understood what lurked under Jessica's words. Because she had heard a little bit from Jessica and Kenan about what had happened between them. <laughs> Apparently, George had also been informed about that, more or less. George approached the window and looked up at the darkening, rainy, rainy sky. Kanon kun wa, mada o sanai no ni, kangae kata ga skoshi senobi shite ru tokoro ga aru to o mon desu. Iya. <laughs> もうよしてくれよ。まずその、私も雰囲気に流されてたところはあったと思うしさ。まずその、シャノンたちのことを見て、その、ちょっと羨ましいとか思って、気がせいていたところもあったかもしれねえな。わ
私のことなんかどうでもいいだろ ?I care about you, Jessica. それより、ジョージ兄さんたちの方はどういう感じなんだよだいぶいい感じなんだろう<笑>えっと、ど、どうなんでしょううん、とてもいい感じだよ。Shannon was lost for words, her face red, while George answered brightly and immediately. That carefree attitude made it obvious that their relationship was proceeding so perfectly it would make anyone envious. どうなんだろうね。僕にもわからないね。George laughed like he was being mean and drew closer to Shannon. It was probably the way they usually flirted when they were alone. Jessica could only smile awkwardly and say, Yes, yes, thank you, that's enough. 僕には夢がある。それは一国一城の主になりたいというビジネス的な野望だけじゃない。生涯を共にできる伴侶と幸せな家族を築きたいという夢もある。子供は最低でも二人欲しいとか、家族で一緒にできるスポーツをしたいねとか、他にもいろいろ。そんな話をよくシャノンとはするよ。こんなことを話すと、いつもシャノンには気が早いですねと笑われるんだけど、僕はこの年のうちからもう、なぜか落ち着いた老後のことを考えてしまうんだよ。元気に成長した子供たちと駆け回る孫たちと。You're still so young, George. そういうものに囲まれて、いつまでもシャノンと二人、ゆっくりと余生を送れたらなって。そりゃ確かに気の早い話だぜ。でも、なんて言うのか、その、ジョージ兄さんらしい話だなそんな家族に囲まれたらさぞ素敵でしょうね私が思い描いていた理想の家族もそんな感じだったと思います To Shannon who had been raised in a welfare institute that harmonious image of a family was probably something she yearned after And George, who promised that he would definitely grant that wish for her, was surely a fitting person for her to spend her life with. Shannon was an important friend to Jessica. George was surely the, most, the one most fit to entrust the friend's future to. Do they know that Eva disapproves? He's awfully confident. Shannon ジョージ兄さんかっこいいぜよくそんな恥ずかしいセリフを堂々と昔の兄さんはそういうキャラじゃなかったと思ったんだけどな男子三日会わざれば滑目して待つべしさ僕だって成長するシャノンを幸せに
っていうかよ、私はお邪魔虫なんじゃないかって気がしてきたぜ。席を外した方がいいか Smiling awkwardly, Jessica stood up from the bed she had been sitting on. And at that very moment, the phone rang. Oh, no wonder I'm hearing like something like a phone or something ringing in the background, and I was wondering if that was part of the, <laughs> the visual novel. Before Jessica picked up the receiver, wondering what they wanted, Shannon looked at the clock and was taken aback. It seemed that she had taken too long on her break. I guess it, that's probably Genji calling Shannon. At the same time that Jessica picked up the phone, Shannon began dashing out of the room. Ah,、uh, Shannon! Mata, it's more no jikani, it's more no basare. I knew it. <laughs> Time for dinner, time for the letter to be read aloud. Many plates were lined up on the counter in the kitchen, and preparations for dinner were proceeding steadily. The number of plates that were lined up there was 19. <gasps> Because Beatrice is there. Oh my god. She's gonna join them for dinner then? That number was one more than were lined up during a family conference every year. Not to get a s e n ゴーダスフェイスどうして私が直接お届けに上がってはならないのですか Cause you're an ass ゴーダスさんは flaring up at Genji paying no heat to the pot that was boiling over He's the pot that's boiling over <laughs> That's a very lame pun It's not even a pun It's a bad joke The master enjoys having his food alone in his study so the food must be set out in the study Of course, this is nothing new, you understand. Goda san would really like to set the table for the master with his own hands as he put his heart and soul into his cooking. But the master had imposed a strict rule that none, of the, none but the servants bearing the crest of the golden eagle could enter his study. So, while Goda san could greet the master from outside the study, Not once had he been granted the honor of carrying his cooking into the study. I wonder if Goda even knows how Kinzo looks like at this point, because he is like a new hire, right? And Kinzo has been locked away in his study for like the past few years. Goda san was always unsatisfied with this. Of course, he knows he is a newcomer in terms of years of service. However, he has accumulated plenty of experience from his previous jobs, and he is strongly confident that he would be able to conduct himself properly, even in front of Kinzo, in a way that would not insult him. And yet, just because he is not permitted the Golden Eagle, he still hasn't been blessed with this honor. それが彼のプライドをどれほど傷つけていたか想像できるでしょうか ?Kumasawa appearing at odd timings to give her own monologue is starting to become a little old. <laughs> では今夜も再びそれを蒸し返しているのかというとそうではありません。What does that mean? 今夜は親方様の他にもお部屋まで食事を運んでもらいたいという方がおられるからです。So Beatrice isn't gonna be eating with the family? その人物は非常に稀な貧客らしく、当主である親方様と同格の扱いをするようにきつく言明されておりました。ゴーダさんは
この賓客にぜひ自らの手で配膳してポイントを稼ぎたかったに違いありません。虚栄心のお強い方でございますから、親方様に配膳する資格はなくても、せめてそれと同格の来客には、昼食はどうしても手が開かず、カノンさんに言ってもらった。だから、一年で最高の晩餐である今夜の食事を、ぜひ自分の手で配膳したかったのですですがそれを源氏さんに咎められたのでございます郷田さんに片欲のわしがないからということのようです再び資格がないと咎められ郷田さんの堪忍袋の尾が切れてしまったのでございますああおいたわしや郷田さん私は物陰からこうして見守るしかないのでございます I'm trying to hold back my laughter because I'm pretty sure this is like at least the last two lines are kind of the same as what she said about Natsuhi before from the shadows and how heart heart wrenching it is that she can't do anything 熊沢さん、油を売っている暇があったら、食堂の準備をしてきてください。テーブルクロスは大丈夫ですか<笑> ?No, wait. This Goda is hilarious to look at.、Um, his hands, and now it's closed into fist, like he's gonna beat up an old lady. What's wrong with you, Goda? <笑>これはこれは失礼よ。That boing sound. When it became her turn to bear the brunt, Kumasawa softly disappeared into the hall. Beatrice Samoa, Oyakata Sama to Mattak Dokak no Okata. Rule Mo Oyakata Sama no Soreto, Onaji Mono, Totoba Nakteva Naran. Goda wa, Jibun no Shimotoni Sennen Shi. Shinzok no Minasan no Oite o Suryo. Sono Yona Okak Sama Aiteni. 源氏さんならともかくこんな子供を生かせていいのですかもし何かの粗相があったら失礼にあたります確かに彼らの年季は長いですがしかるべきところで修行をしたことがあるわけじゃない正直に申し上げてお客様に接する基礎ができていないのです If this was a drama, Genji would slap Goda at this point <sighs> Goda spoke bluntly, even though Shannon was waiting right there in the kitchen. Oh, that's harsh. Now that's really harsh. Shannon was the one who Genji had ordered to carry the food to Beatrice's room. By the ranking system among the servants permitted the Golden Eagle, Shannon was indeed the second highest ranked. Wait, they have a ranking system? Have they ever explained? This? I don't think so. If the highest ranked Genji went to set the table in Kinzo's room, then it fell to Shannon to set the table in Beatrice's room. Yoda's pride was always horribly injured when he was confronted with the ranking system. In times like that, he would speak out bluntly and rudely about Shannon and Cannon. Goda kept raising example after example of Shannon's past failures, making a ruckus about how this was wrong and that was wrong. As Shannon listened to this with her head hung in shame, she heard Cannon's voice from behind her. Cannon had been listening from a blind spot, leaning against the hallway side of the wall near the entrance to the kitchen. He probably knew that if he entered the kitchen, sparks would Start to fly his way. You are set to Okinao. Sighted no Tokoda. Demo Setta no Kiso no Benkyong in Arushi. Goda san a taxan Benkyong Sterkara. Totemo Sankoni. Ne san wa yasashi ne. Soreyori Kihis no Kaksamanga, Beatrice Samada to you no Honto Nano. 昼食の配膳に生かされた時にあった間違いなくあいつだったよそ
。そう。お元気そうだった。<笑> Shannon remembered that he and Shannon had different impressions of Beatrice. To Shannon, Beatrice was a cupid of love who had granted her magic to create her relationship with George. Judging by her happy expression, it looked like she couldn't wait to inform Beatrice of how her relationship with George had progressed. However, Shannon already knew. That witch had come here with a terrifying goal in mind. That vague witch, in the past only visible to them, had now walked in openly through the front door and had revived enough that they could now carry food to her. In the past, when she had disappeared from in front of Cannon, the witch had said something about how her own power was still weak. Now that the witch could appear openly like this, did that mean that she had finally returned to her former power? And she had said, she had said clearly that she had sown the seeds of love with the knowledge that it would fail. She had said also, she had said clearly that the day had finally come when the door to the golden land would be opened. シャノンあいつは親方様と何かの怪しげな儀式をしきっと想像もできない恐ろしいことをするそれには誰も抗えない何の話なのあいつはやってきたんだ親方様が求めた黄金鏡の扉を開き全て黄金鏡に戻すためにあいつは僕に確かにそう言った In the past, the two of them, as furniture working for Kinzo, had been told what the opening of the door to the Golden Land meant. Therefore, even without asking a single question in response, Shannon understood everything. So, she grew deeply hopeless. Something tore at Kenan's heart as he saw her expression twist with grief. They haven't explained what the opening of the Golden Land meant, but considering what happened in episode one, I'm guessing death. だから行ったんだ。僕らは家具だって。人間の真似事なんかして。こういなんかするから。僕たちの役目の終わるこの日を。素直に受け入れられない。いつか。この日が訪れること。かつては願ってた。でも。いつまで経っても訪れなくて。
even though he's trying not to get attached to people and to remember his position as furniture, it feels like he has already failed a little in that aspect. I don't think he can calmly say that when the golden the door to the golden land opens that he would be perfectly fine that Shannon is gone. ジョージ様は姉さんに婚約指輪を送るだろうって Oh my goodness <laughs> That was a fact George should have snuck in an engagement ring in his pocket today And surely he would hand it over tonight That's why he was talking about That whole thing about Eva and Hideyoshi Just now Aitsuwa姉さんと上司様を第二の晩の生贄に使うつもりで二人の中をくっつけたんだ。わかる。姉さんはあいつにそそのかされた上、利用されたんだよ。そうだったの。考えたこともなかったわ。でもあいつは言ったよ。もし
できないよ今夜の指輪はとても特別なものそれを受け取らないことは私の心が許さない姉さん儀式の生贄は魔女が気まぐれに決めることになってるその魔女が姉さんだけは見逃すと約束してくれたんだよ姉さんだけは絶対に黄金郷へ行けるんだ私だけカノン君は僕は魔女のゲームで十分さあいつのマシなんかかいくぐってやる僕は無力じゃないわずかの確率を無理やり掴み取ってやる<笑>僕たちのせいなんて所詮はかりそめじゃないか本当の人生を始めるために僕たちは黄金郷へたどり着こうそして人間を手に入れようそうしたらさ僕も姉さんみたいに恋が知れるかなもう家具だからって人を泣かせずに済むかな Make people cry. もうもう家具は嫌だ絶対に人間になってやるこんな苦しみから絶対に There were tears in Cannon's eyes. It had taken Cannon until now to notice. Shannon hadn't been the only one to know and suffer the taste of love. He had too. The tears Jessica had shown him that day, and her painful smiles on all the days since as she tried to smooth things over and brighten her mood, had slowly wrought some kind of change on Cannon's heart without him knowing it. シャノンさっきから呼んでいる Shannon snapped back to reality at the sudden sound of Genji's voice Apparently she had been called for repeatedly She hurriedly answered When she turned around, Kenan had disappeared It seemed he didn't feel like showing his tears to anybody <sighs> はい、ぼんやりしていてすみません昼食はカノンに頼んだが本来は私の次の序列のお前が運ぶべきものだベアトリーチェ様は当家の最高の賓客だそれ以上の賓客はいないもう一人の親方様と思い丁重に頼むよろしいですかくれぐれも粗相のないようにお願いしますよいやいやゴーダー you can shut up now 経験の未熟なあなたに託すのは非常に心苦しいですが、当家のルールとあっては仕方ありません。くれぐれも頼みますよ。ゴーダー had officially agreed, but he threatened Shannon with an expression that told her that he definitely wouldn't forgive any mistakes.Shannon too thought that ゴーダー should do it if he wanted to that much. But considering it as her responsibility, as one who had been granted the Golden Eagle, she had to give up. Besides, I wanted to meet Beatrice. What will I talk about? What will I ask? I don't know. Will I show gratitude? Or else grief? Or else what? I don't know. Shannon loaded the witch's food onto the serving cart and left the kitchen with a slow gait. She doesn't want to meet her. But I'm sure Beatrice can read her mind anyway. The person knocking was Krauss. Hey,黙れ! Inzo screamed through the door. Genji was waiting behind Krauss. 
今夜はどうか下へ降りていただきたいとお父さん毎日とは言いませんせめて今夜だけでも家族で揃ってはくれませんか誰が家族か貴様はいつから生き倒れを待つハゲタカたちを家族と呼ぶようになったのか Hunt really argue with him there. 腐りて湧き出すウジ虫を家族と呼ぶようになったのか But that is quite harsh. <sighs> やれやれ Krauss shrugged at his answer, which he had half expected. Genji, you are the Tori Ni Shokji of Kokoe Hakobe. Nazi, you koto kikanu. Nazi, Nazi. Genji, son, Ato Tanomimas. Mo Anushto ni Watashi no Koe wa todo kan. Krauss gave his head a small shake and quickly turned his back on the door to the study. He had only called out for his sibling's sake. Knowing it was useless. After Genji watched Kraus go down the stairs, he called again through the door. Oyakata-sama, Oshokuji o hakobu junbi wa dekite o orimasu. Nanjo sensei no bun wa i. Nanjo was also in the study. Because Kinzo had strongly pestered him about resolving their long lasting chess game, Nanjo had been Kinzo's opponent since before evening. Nanjo had announced as a doctor that Kinzo's days were numbered. In that situation, if Kinzo pestered him about finishing a chess game while he was still alive, Nanjo couldn't refuse. Kinzo was thinking deeply about his move, concentrating more than usual. It had been Kinzo's turn for quite some time, and Nanjo, who was tired of waiting, had started randomly pulling out grimoires that he couldn't understand. And skimming through them. Kinzo-san, Banmen o mai ni ure o kumu dake dewa ii itte wa demasen zo. Hitotsu kyukei o shite, atama o refresh shite miru no mo ii no dewa arimasen ka na. Tamari! Hmm. Mamori wa kore de jubun ka. Bishop ya nai to ni skima o tsukare wa shinai ka. Hmm. Today, Kinzo was insistent on a strong defense. Normally, Kinzo's motto was that offense was the best defense. However, today was completely the opposite. Yeah, I couldn't help but wonder if his chess game had anything to do with what is currently going on in the family. また私も腹が減りました。ここいらで中断しませんか。それに休みなく頭を回転させておりましたから、もう頭がクラクラです。これ以上は私も最善手をさせるとは限りませんぞ。それは困る。チェスは互いに常に最善手を刺さねばならん
。それは確か、ずいぶん昔に私がお前に言った言葉だったはず。This is kind of unlike the Kinzo I know.He actually has a little bit of a heart? <笑>これは参った。Kinso, who normally wore a frown, surprisingly relaxed his face and laughed. Nanjo felt like he had been reunited with a close friend he hadn't seen in a long time. So you could do this. I pon to rare that's the name. Do this. What is the stani orite? Shokujito ikimasenka. Shokuni kohi to ishoni. Kasparov no chuba ni tsite no giron de moikaga des. Hold up, ritual? I'm sorry if there are background noise, but the ritual has already begun? What? So, this is. The other side of the world is a little bit of a p r o b l e 下へ降りることにします。気が向いたらいつでも。何畳、ありがとう。This is ominous. おや、何のお礼ですかなお前とのチェスの決着はつかなかった。だが、私が忘れていたチェスの目的はどうやら果たせたらしい。それはどうも。チェックメイトと同じくらい重要なものであったらしい。らしくもない。何の干渉ですかな。お前が言ったのではないか。私には余命がないと。もう行けそしてもうこの部屋へ来るな。続きは黄金鏡でやろう。See, I think it's consistent in both episode one and currently in episode two that Kinzo seems to know something about what is happening behind the scenes.、Um, that's also why I think he's like a mastermind. I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? Who else would it be? Still, we shall have to see in the coming episodes. いいですが、仕切り直しですぞ。ルークが落ちてしまったのは、痛手ですのでな。それでは、後ほど。ああ、<笑>後ほどな。黄金鏡か、煉獄か。あるいは、杉のようで。Nanjo didn't say anything beyond that. And with a practiced hand, he pushed the button on the table that would release the auto lock. Then, after looking at Kinzo's back one last time, he left the study. Kinda sounds like a man who's ready to take his own life. As he did, Genji's voice came from the hall. So, the way I'm going to go to the house, I'm going to go to the house. 最後の晩餐になるやもしれぬ。味わわねばな。準備を頼む。Okay, I can't help but think this because we know that this visual novel has a lot of religious themes, but more specifically、um, Christian themes. And I think it would just be interesting if he really did say supper. <laughs> In Japanese. k a s h k o m a r i m a s h u m b i no ho wa Bantan to n a r i m a s h t a k Genji knows, Kinzo knows. They pan to a shot of the door with the scorpion charm. Kono hea o Kyo made to e h a t a e no k e k a de Genji ni t s u n d a あれのルーレットが私を選ぼうとも必ずや弾き返す。そして生き残り、黄金鏡へたどり着くうちの一人は絶
Oh, I get it now. So the fact that Kinzo wasn't even in his room is even more suspicious than I thought it was. I thought he might have just, you know, left the room and walked around on his own. But considering that he barricaded his room to, like he said, survive, then it's suspicious that he would even leave his room to begin with unless there's something more tempting outside that he had to leave for. Wow, that kind of changes everything about what I initially thought. Shannon entered the VIP room, bowing her head and pushing the serving cart. The young woman by the window, apparently gazing out into the impenetrable darkness outside, was unmistakably that witch. Shannon solemnly prepared dinner. There were actually several things that she wanted to ask and talk with the witch about. But those things were all jumbled up and she didn't know where to start. Her heart was also jumbled up with various things and she didn't even understand her emotions. Therefore, still remaining vague, all she could do was to carry out her work indifferently. However, the witch guessed what was in her heart. You can't hide things from a witch. <laughs> そなたの恋路を助けたのは、わらわの単なるいたずら心。いかにして恋じれ、ねじれ、破綻するかを干渉するために巻いた種にすぎぬと。恋は、するより聞く方が楽しい方もおられるでしょう。まさか、わらわに
I am saying she is bold. わらわの命令が聞けぬというか。家具なら命令に従いますでも人間は命令に従うかどうかを自分で決めます。だから私はあなたの命令に従わない。全言を撤回する。やはり面白いぞ。<笑><笑> タネを巻かねばそなたは何の感情も抱かず儀式に身を任せただろうしかし今のそなたは実に面白くそだちわらわを心底楽しませてくれるぞそれでいいわらわは退屈を愛さないのだからお夕食の準備が整いましたどう
私たちを嘲笑うのか、私たちの前に現れず、運命を予告しなかったなら、私たちは最後の一瞬まで、精一杯生きられるのに。それが魔女というものよ。貴様らの運命を食い物に、工事の存在として定時の存在の上に君臨する。そなたらの運命など、所詮はかけら。両手で腕を作ればいくらでも救える。わらわに飼われた肉牛どもが何をほざこうとも、わらわの食卓を楽しませる結果に変わりはせぬのに同じこと。<笑>無力な私たちには、あなたの儀式にも運命にも抗うことなどできないしかしあなたに今すぐ不愉快な思いをさせることはできる What is she gonna do? ほうそれは何か It'd be funny if she threw her dinner at her face but I don't think that's what's gonna happen 今すぐここを立ち去ることですあなたの言葉に答えることはすべてあなたを楽しませているあなたの問いかけに答えないことがあなたへ唯一できる抵抗ですうん、wait I suddenly recall but remember how Battler also has to resist Beatrice, right? but I remember in episode 1 or at the end、um, Beatrice did say that Battler has a way To, I think, resist her or stop her, but that he doesn't know it. Something like that, right? And I guess Shannon is giving us the answer right now is to just walk away and not answer her question, to ignore Beatrice? Damn. Hmm. Nah, <laughs> わらわを倒すことはできぬぞ。わらわは誰しもを永遠に殺す力を持っている。永遠に繰り返し殺される輪廻の中で、そなたがいつまでその抵抗をできるのか。忘れるなよ。自らが口にした言葉。<笑>それでは、失礼いたします。ご用がありましたらお呼びくださいシャネン gave a reserved bow as she would to a stranger and faced away with that gesture maybe she really had taken a shot back at the witch just as Beatrice had mentioned because when the witch called out again she sounded a little more quick tempered than she had before カノンはわらわに感謝したぞそなたは感謝せぬのか安息の日をわらわが与えることを家具なら安息の日を喜びましょうですが私は人間ですのでだからあなたに感謝することはありませんご用はそれだけですか My goodness I just I think I am very happy with Shannon's development right now I have nothing else to say but good on you Shannon for Claiming your right to be a human and discard that furniture. Eight. Jorge, から指輪をもらうつもりであろう。受け取れば、わらわがカノンと交わした、そなたを生贄に選ばないという約束を破棄すること。まだご用があるなら、他のものを来させますので、それでは失礼いたします。Damn, she just ignored Beatrice? A flat out interruption. Shannon gave no more answers. And the sound of the door closing came instead of an answer. It seemed that Shannon's resistance had probably struck far more deeply into the witch than Shannon herself had thought. Because an expression of hatred had once again risen to Beatrice's face. She had made Cannon submit, even though he hadn't been taken in until the end. Yet, after that, now it was Shannon who refused to submit when until now she had been easily taken in. Hmm. 
やはりこれは面白いことではないか。<笑>わらわもまだまだ若いか。これだから、千年は生き飽きぬのよ。Seems like she calls everyone who opposes her interesting. Well, except Canon. I don't think she said that about him. But with Battler and Shannon now. I guess she likes challenges. Dinner time? The most fabulous time in a family conference. That was dinner. Back when Kinzo had been serious about the family conference, he had placed extreme importance upon this dinner for which everyone would gather just once a year. Should the dinner not meet standards, he would take it as the deepest shame for himself as the host, and he had strongly ordered Natsuhi to make absolutely sure that it was one to be proud of. Because of that, she and Kraus had employed Goda, who had confidence in his cooking abilities. As a result, they could unveil a wonderful dinner they had confidence in. Yet, by that time, Kinzo had started closing himself up in his study and no longer appeared for dinner. Maybe you could call that ironic. When the main dish for tonight, calf stick, was set out, Goda began to brag about it, further exciting everyone's appetite. こちらソースはボルドレーズとなっておりますベースの赤ワインはもちろんボルドーさんの中でも素晴らしいものを使用しておりますがその他にも陶器オリジナルブレンドとしまして世界各地数種類の名刺をブレンドしましてより深い味わいとなりますよう整えてございますこのソースは本年限りのものでございますどうかお楽しみいただければ幸いですうん、素晴らしいじゃないかしかしボルドレーズソースはフランス料理の王道ではないのかねそれにフランス以外の酒を使うのは少し邪道ではないかという気もするねフラウス、Why are you setting your own chef out for failure? <laughs> trapping him the question like that Well, not trapping but seems kind of weird 旦那様本日は年に一度の親族会議でございます普段は遠方にお住まいの皆様がはるばるお越しになり一堂に集われた夜の晩餐には世界各地より普段は出会うことのない名酒を取り寄せブレンドしたソースが何よりもふさわしいかと存じ特別にご用意させていただいたのでございます素晴らしい本当に素晴らしい料理人やあんたは脳学が変わると、料理も薬も効果は2倍になるっちゅうわけやな。元の料理のうまさも2倍。さらに脳学で2倍。味の倍々ゲームや。<笑>いやね、兄さん。その質問、読まれてたんじゃないの ?I was gonna say that it looked like they rehearsed that bit and it would be funny. If they actually did. Imagine Kraus and Goda just standing outside the kitchen and <laughs> Kraus had to do, not Kraus, Goda had to do like five retakes because of it. I'm laughing at, <laughs> I'm laughing at the image, it's in my head. So, <laughs> Kami? 今日の料理をフランス風だと気づいていないものもいるんじゃないかと思ってねエヴァは先ほどバターを使わないのが美徳と言ったがそれはスペイン風だ確かに国境を接してはいるがねそういう意味で言ったんじゃないわよ話の一部分だけ抜き出して勝手に加工しないでくれるかしらうんとても美味しいソースね。ゴーダさんは本当に素晴らしいわ。お褒めに預かり、大変光栄です
これもすべて奥様の日頃のご指導のおかげでございますい,いえすべてゴーダのアイディアです私はレシピを聞き承認しただけですえっ、like However, the thing they all really wanted to ask about smoldered inside each of their hearts. And that was the visitor, the 19th person, the Golden Witch. In actuality, Eva, Rudolph, and Kirie were on alert during dinner. If the mystery guest was to be introduced, this dinner table was the most appropriate place to do it. However, no plates had been prepared at the table for the witch. The family conference would begin in earnest after the meal, and previous experiences told them that it could last until deep into the night. But they couldn't understand what meaning there could be in keeping this person, who should be introduced, hidden until late at night. So Eva, Rudolf, and Kirie had started to suspect something. That the guest might actually be unknown to Krauss as well. If she wasn't a saboteur called by Krauss to give him an advantage in the inheritance problem, they should probably speak frankly to Krauss beforehand and create a common front to resist anything disadvantageous to the four siblings. If she was Kinzo's saboteur, whose purpose was to keep the inheritance from being handed over to the four siblings, the enmity, <laughs> enmity between Krauss and the other siblings could become nothing more than a weak point that benefited the enemy. With the table set and the cuisine explained, Goda tried to leave the room, but Kirie called him to a stop with a small voice. はい、キリエ様。何かえっと、ごめんなさい。今日はお客様がいらっしゃってると思ったんだけど、晩餐にはお見えにならないのかしら。She had thought she'd said it nonchalantly, but unfortunately, it reached the ears of Natsuhi, who was sitting in the next seat. It seemed that Natsuhi had heard it to mean, even though there are guests here today, won't the host be coming to dinner? In other words, that Kirie had asked whether Kinzo was going to come to dinner. Toshu sama wa taichou ga sugure rare masen no de, o hea de shokuji o toru to ose desu. Shujin ga hajime ni sou setsume itashimashi ta ga, nani ka. Gomen nasai, sou ja nai no. In an instant, Kirie realized from Natsuhi's reaction that this unknown visitor was also unknown to Kraus and his wife. And what that meant. On the chessboard placed inside Kirie's mind, she could feel the arrangement of the pieces changing, making loud, clattering sounds. Kaku? It seemed that Battler, who was sitting next to Natsuhi, had heard Kirie's words without misunderstanding them. And he let out a wild voice, questioning who else could have been invited to today's family conference. Thanks to that voice, the uncomfortable feeling in the sibling's chests suddenly exploded. Everyone looked at Goda at the same time. Judging by their appearances, it was obvious that at least no one here had invited that mystery woman. For an instant, Goda was startled to find everyone's gaze gathered on him, but because of his naturally vain personality, this actually gave him a feeling of superiority. <laughs> Therefore, he answered in an extremely calm and graceful manner. Therefore, Goda's extremely graceful and reasonable response made it obvious to everyone that a 19th person, a visitor, existed. Natsuhi's words echoed the question that everyone who didn't know about the visit of the Golden Witch was thinking. 
Goda was slightly disoriented, as though he hadn't remotely expected to be questioned by Natsuhi. That honored guest had been spoken of so stringently. He hadn't imagined that Krauss and his wife might not have known. <laughs> Maria had been telling the other cousins over and over again that she had met Beatrice today. The cousins had answered saying, isn't that nice, but they hadn't believed. So their eyes grew wide. すまねえ。俺は適当にマリアの冗談だと思ってたぜ。あ、本当にいたんだな。ベアトリーチェってあの黄金のベアトリーチェなのかよ。マリアはいるって絶対言ってる。誰も信じてない。ごめんね、マリ
あれは In the instant before the typhoon visited, Rosa had definitely met with the witch in the rose garden. But that scene had been so hard to accept as reality. And the more she spoke of it like this, the less she understood what it was she had met. Ironically, because she had lost her composure when she said that she had definitely met the witch, the more desperate she became, the more vague the witch's existence seemed. So it was a single composed sentence that affirmed her existence for certain. I was there. I can't say words, but I can say words. I don't have to be wrong with Rosa. Kiryu, that's really real. Yes, but she didn't call me to me. だから彼女がベアトリーチェであると断定はできないでも主観的で恐縮なんだけど私は玄関ホールで彼女に会ったから肖像画と顔を見比べることができた私は第一印象で彼女こそがこの肖像画の主に違いないって思ったわあくまでも主観よそんなことはありえません第一、その女はどこからやってきたというのですか今日の船は皆さんの送迎のための便が往復しただけです。その船に乗っていたのですかふん<笑>、それを言われると弱いね。確かに、そんなご婦人と一緒に下船した記憶はない。Less than 19, more than 18 problem. Ah, so? What is the name of 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 the 全員が見てないところでこっそり来たことを否定はできない。つまり、悪魔の証明ってやつだ。It's easy to prove that a devil exists.All you have to do is meet a devil.But it is impossible to prove that devils don't exist.Just because no one has ever met a devil, Doesn't mean that you can deny the possibility that they're hiding away somewhere that humans cannot go. You can't deny the existence of aliens for exactly the same reasons. Until humanity searches the whole of space and can show perfectly that aliens don't exist, you can't be sure that they don't. And it's definitely impossible for us to ever check the entirety of space for the existence of aliens. Therefore, while there may be a number of ways to prove that aliens do exist, it is impossible to show proof that denies their existence. To be honest, if we were to go to the ship and go to the ship, we would have to debate on the issue of the ship. We didn't have to go to the ship with us. That's just the truth. In other words, we would have to go to the ship with us. That's right. どうやって来たかなんて議論の必要はないかもしれない肝心なのは現にこの屋敷に今いて私たちと晩餐を共にする気がないという事実よ整理しよう今この島には後ろ宮家18人以外にもう一人客がいるそしてそいつは兄貴も夏日姉さんも知らない客だってんだな知りません何の話だかもわかりませんお前は少し黙っていなさい頭痛に触る妻の言う通りだ私にはお前たちが何の話をしているのかさっきからさっぱりだじゃあ答えは一つしかないわお父様が呼んだのよ今日の親族会議のために親族会議にだから何のためにそんなの知らないわよ兄さんが知ってたら、それを問い詰めようって思ってたのよええわ、予算か。クラス兄さんは知らんと言うとる。つまり、話はこうや
お父さんが肖像画の魔女にそっくりの客人をこっそり招いた。それに、ローザさんが出会い、マリアちゃんが出会い、そしてキリエさんもあった。今はそこまでや。わしらに言いたいことがあるんなら、とっとと姿を現せばえ。挨拶もなしに引きこもってるっちゅうんはどないなわけなんや。親族会議なんか花から関心のない親父が、新しい愛人をこっそり呼びつけたってわけか理想の魔女様のおべべを着せてよ。そう決着するには、今日という日は意味を持ちすぎてるぜ。理由は一つしかない。親族会議に加わるためよ。They're so focused on money that they can't even entertain other possibilities. お父様の遺産について、何かの権利を主張する気でいるのよバカバカしい。当主様に愛人などと汚らわしいものなどおりませんお前は黙っていると言っている私はこの屋敷でずっと親父だなと過ごしているがそんな話は聞いたこともない最大限理解を示したとして何十年も昔の愛人との間に隠し子がいたとしてそれを親父殿が探し出し今日という日に呼びつけたと。こう言いたいのかねあなたお父様にそんなものがいるわけがありません尊い後宮の血が愛人ごときに先ほどから数人が見た見たと自称しているに過ぎません。幻想妄想白昼夢に決まっています。あるいはこれも夫を落とし入れるための皆さんの何らかの芝居なのですか何の芝居だってのよ芝居だって言うならそっちでしょうがよせよ姉貴ちょいと暴力的な言い方だが夏日さんの言う通りではある桐江は姿を見たが俺は見てない姉貴もだだがローザは見たしかしってことはいるってことになる The devil's proof, right? いるを証明している連中が存在する以上いるで直ちに決着だ悪魔の証明の逆パターンってわけだな。それに、俺も会いたいんだよ。そして、一体当家に何の御用かと直接問いただしたい。それについては私も同感だ。六軒島へ何の御用かぜひお尋ねしたいものだ。知らじらしいこと言わないで狙いは一つよ。お父様の遺産を狙ってるのよ相続問題に明るい弁護士に今後の作戦を練らせるべきよお母様と同格の権利を愛人が主張した場合、私たちの取り分はかっきり半分さらわれることになるちょ、ちょっとみんな待って。源氏さんがもうじき来るわ。彼は何でも知ってる。きっと私たちの疑問に答えてくれるわ。それまで、そういう話はなしにしましょう。さあ子供たち悪いけれど大人はちょっと込み入った話をしないといけないの I kind of forgot that they were saying all this in front of the kids ゲストハウスへ戻っていなさい Rosa yelled at the children slightly emotional The children didn't understand why they were suddenly being yelled at now but Eva and the rest came to the same realization as Rosa after a delay They were talking so grandly about the filthy topic of the inheritance in front of the children. There was no way they'd want the children to remain here. So they all immediately agreed with Rosa's plan. So, so, yeah, na. Rosa san no yu tori ya. Joji, itoko minna de guest house ni modotteru ya. Itoko doshi, naka yoku asobu ya de. Joji, iwarata tori ni nasa. Itoko minna o tsurete ima sugu dete iku no yo. ちょ、ちょっと待ってよ、母さん。僕たちはまだ食事も終えていない。うん。デザートもまだ来てない。うん。デザートは、ゴーダさんにゲストハウスに運ばせます。だから出て行きなさい。ジェシカ、ここから先は大人の話し合いです。Actually, if they are all talking, shouldn't they leave the room? Go to the parlor or something? And the kids can continue eating in peace? Damn. y i k i n a s a Wakatayo. Mada, quick, I got up to me. 
ってことは俺だけ例外ってことはないよな理解してくれてありがとうバトラ君でもあなたラッキーよえー、どうして私も出ていけるなら出ていきたいもの<笑>違いねえぜ大人は大人で遺産をめぐって楽しい一家団らをお楽しみくださいってんだ私も席を外しましょうどうやら今夜は私の出番はなさそうだアンジョソフリーローズフォンヒシーツ He had been calmly watching the whole discussion from his seat at the farthest corner of the table without pointlessly interrupting. His reaction was very adult, like a calm old gentleman. When Nanjo rose from his seat, it urged on the other people who were supposed to leave. As the children noisily rose from their seats, a commotion was heard in the hallway as the servants returned. Okay, wait. But remember in the last episode. Uh, in the last part, that Prowse and Atsuhi were talking about some strange things, like how Genshi and Nanjo were basically their allies, right? And what if everything that Genji's gonna say is actually what they wanted him to say? What I'm trying to say <laughs> is that what if Krause and Natsuhi already knew that. Beatrice was here. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 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 It seemed that Goda did not appreciate that dinner he had worked so hard on was going to be interrupted like this. He sent Natsuhi a look as though asking her whether that was really alright. Rosa san no yu tori ni suru yo ni. Sore kara, watashi tachi ni dessert no haizen wa fuyo desu. Yobidashi ga aru made, shokudo ni wa chikazuka nai yo ni. Kore wa hoka no shio ni ni mo tsutae r koto. Ii desu ne? Ah, hai. かしこまりましたさあさあ皆さん参りましょうかなマリアさんもこれ以上お母さんを困らせてはいけませんおーおーおーマリアもベアとの話するやだやだやだおーおーマリアちゃん僕たちにゲストハウスでベアトリーチェの話を聞かせてくれないかいぜひ魔女の話を聞きたいんだねっうんはいジョージ兄さんは本当にうめえぜ感動するぜ本当に子持ちじゃねえのかよ手慣れすぎだぜ<笑>マリアスムード was completely back to normal at George's words and she even took the initiative in hiring everyone to go to the guest house It looked like Goda didn't like being kicked out himself, but he was unable to disobey Natsuhi and left the room with Battler and the rest, closing the door. What's your name? Hey, Aruwa! Tappuri! That's all! Who wants to ask a question? I want to ask a question! But... What? Really? Okay. I'm gonna end here for today, but... What was that about? They are just gonna cut off everything about... What I want to know about Beatrice at that moment, and we're gonna fast forward to... This next chapter.
after wedding ring. Which I guess is gonna be about George's proposal to Shannon. This episode sure has a lot of things again with mainly how impressed I am by Shannon who completely changed herself um, and stopped acting like furniture because she knew she has the right to be a human. And then I have a feeling that perhaps like Shannon said that one of the ways that we already have to resist Beatrice is to just ignore her to walk away from her and I guess I can't help but think also about how you know just like how gods rely on people's faith that what if Beatrice also needs people to recognize her importance to pay their respects to her um, and that's how she gains a power or something along those lines so that was one point then the other was well everything everything that's going on in dinner played out differently from what happened last time i think by now i should just accept the fact that everything that's happening in this version of events is just gonna be completely or kind of different from the episode one events but yeah there's that i don't think i have anything else to add mostly just impressed by shannon <laughs> and we did see a bit of a different side to beatrice but i think that's about all from me today anyway thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time and bye